Ladies and gentlemen, beginning now, the World of Warcraft Lawrence Story Q&A begins. Please give a round of applause to our panelists. What up, Red Con? It is on. How's everybody doing? End of day two. Uh, Woo! What's up, baby? There he is. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wild Hammer Fact Checker is in the house. First in line. First in line. There he is. Woo! Woo! It's all right. We brought a blue shirt as backup. Guys, uh, 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 my name is Chris Madsen, uh, story director for Blizzard. This is Dave Kozak. He is the lead quest Woo! designer for World of Warcraft. And on our left is Sean Copeland. He's one of our uh, historians, so uh, if Dave and I get into trouble today, he's our sniper, right? So, what are you doing last year again? It's like a human encyclopedia of everything. If you've seen him over at the, the lore stage, you know. He knows. <laughs> Attaboy, remember it. Uh, guys, uh, we were talking about doing... Uh, kind of walking through some story stuff, but given the size of that line, um, let's just break into QA. Let's just, let's just hear what you guys have to say and uh, take the whole time for QA. Okay. Um, okay. First, I would like to say thank you for everything that happened last year. Like with, well, not the messing you up, but with putting... It was fine. A, sorry about it's that. Fine. Anyway, putting Barely you... Start. Like spot. putting me in, a, in the game, I like that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. It is great. Okay. Um, but for my question, I know that... Or, no, that's probably repetitive. Okay. Anyway, in Gilneas, the quest lines end with the strong feeling of to be continued and that we're going back. And the only other zone in the game that had that same type of ending was Hyjal, and we did go back to Hyjal two patches later. So does that mean we're also going back to Gilneas? Two patches later, maybe? Maybe back to Gilneas? I don't know. You know, the, uh, the Gilneans have such cool architecture and such a cool vibe to it, and it's really hard just because of the nature of their story. We can't really incorporate that outside in the rest of the world. It's hard to do. So it would be fun to go back to Gilneas and really kind of reclaim that. I don't think it's on, the, it's on the cards right away, but it's a really... We just love the feel of that area and everything that they're about. One suggestion. I know you didn't mention any large world PvP zone for Mista Pandaria like you had Winter Grasp and Tolbarad in previous expansions. Maybe because it's a whole theme of PvP there, it could be Pandaria's world PvP zone since the continent's pretty fleshed out already? Uh, potentially, absolutely. We're looking at ways of getting world PvP into Pandaria. We're going to experiment with a couple things. I don't think we really were ready to talk about anything yet. Uh, we're looking at, at kind of ways to reward that to make that really compelling and interesting. And certainly, as the, the global conflict escalates, uh, we're going to really incorporate a lot of that into Pandaria. It's going to really heat up in Pandaria throughout the patch cycle. So we have some plans, but uh, nothing to really talk about yet. Thank you very much. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Red shirt guy. Hey, guys. My question's for Chris. Three of my favorite characters are Arthas, Illidan, and Prince Kaelthus. When those characters died, what became of their bodies? Did Jaina take Arthas's body with her back to Stormwind? Did and a faction of Blood Elves still tied to Kaelthus claim his body? Is Illidan still at the top of Black Temple? You want could them you, back, don't you? Could we? Could we just bring them all back, Chris? Yeah. Is that cool? Uh, I wouldn't say all. Uh, actually, we're just in a, a, a panel for the, the broad WoW Q&A, and uh, someone brought up, are you ever going to bring Illidan back? And so we just kind of asked, do you guys think we should bring Illidan back? Uh, based on that response, I think it's likely. We'll have to figure it out. Uh, relative to Kale Thoughts, I think his story is pretty done. He already came back, right? We, you know, we, we, we pulled that hat trick once, and uh, so, you know, but Illidan's uh, definitely potential. Uh, now, as for Jaina, you know, running off, 
with Arthur's his body or whatever. I mean, that's just sick, man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what in the world? Uh, but it's a very good question. Where is Arthur? Kind of keep movie? him in a freezer, maybe. She can sew, you know, cast a little blizzard on it. You know, a little. You cast a ice blizzard ice on it. That's right. So, uh, no, uh, we don't uh, necessarily know right now where Arthur's body is, uh, but it's a very good question. Some say he was in the new graveyard. There's a large new tomb that has the Lorder on crest. Some speculated that's where he was. Well, I'll just tell you off, off the top of my head, um, I, I haven't been involved in any conversations about whether that's true or not. Um, but it's a, it's a really interesting question. You know, I mean, his corpse is a uh, potentially very significant You're yeah, very scary. One, you know. Thank you. What's going on, guys? Pride from OMFG Cata, and uh, I have a question from a fan from Facebook named Matthew Wolf, and he wants to know what is the motivation that the Pandaren would have to fight each other on their respective factions and battlegrounds and arenas and things like that? Uh, well, something that uh, is, is hard to get across in the demos you've seen is that the, uh, uh, the Pandaren that live on the turtle uh, have been separated from the Pandaren in the mainland for generations. It's been a long time. Uh, they've, they've kind of, it's almost a, a, a splinter culture. Uh, the bravest, most uh, uh, boldest explorers have gone and, and lived on the turtle, uh, and that's kind of that lineage. They're the ones that you as players are going to play. They're the ones that are going to go out to the world. And uh, you, you can see these events through the 1 through 10 experience when they meet the Alliance and Horde and decide ultimately to, to represent one of those two factions as they go out through the world. So by the time your Pandaren gets to uh, level 85, level 90, uh, you've traveled, traveled the world representing Alliance or Horde and, uh, and are going to bring that, represent that fight. Totally, and while that definitely uh, helps with their motivation, why they would right. fight each other, um, something to keep in mind, I think it's just hilarious. Uh, like when Alliance and Horde, Pandarans face each other on battlefields and stuff like that, like at a lore level, I think they're all like, what's up? Hey dude, what's up? Like it's not like they're pissed, it's not like they're hating on each other at all. I, I think they get a kick out of it, right? Like let's see how you do, let's see how you fight. Um, I don't think they have any shred of hate in them, and they certainly don't have it for each other, regardless of which faction they've chosen. So I think it's kind of more of a fun, like, all right, Sparky, let's see what you got. But they'd probably be drinking beers right after, so. There's, there's something interesting about the Pandaren culture in that, and, and you'll discover this on the, on the mainland of Pandaria, uh, all the uh, negative emotions, all the sort of anger and, and, and vengeance and hatred, uh, those negative energies, they become manifest in Pandaria. They actually take physical form. That's what we call the Shah that you probably saw some concept art for, maybe saw the, the art panel. So if you are filled with all this negative energy, it can literally kind of come and bite you in the butt. It's like really dangerous. So that's why the Pandaren, as a, as a culture, as a species, uh, they really value kind of an inner peace and an inner, inner calm. Uh, they don't want to bring all that bad baggage uh, in, into a fight. Uh, that's that's kind of how they are. That's why they're so chill. So when a Pandaren fights, he, he doesn't fight out of anger, hatred, vengeance, right? He, he fights to, to reach a conclusion and then when things are settled, you have a beer, you have you chill, you take you Relax. take it easy, you bring it down. They take it take it down a notch. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Um, this one's for you, Mr. Metzen. Um, Mr. <laughs> I, it's informal calling you Chris, so Mr. Metzen. Um, uh, you wrote the book personally of Blood and Honor, which I really loved, and it's really good. Good story. And I was wondering if in the future you would ever write a novel or a short story personally that we could read, because I really liked your writing style and you have a really good insight to the characters, so I was just wondering if. That could ever be a possibility that we could afford. Well, thank to. you. Um, you. You know, it was it was uh, it was terrifying writing that because you know I, I don't know you know what I mean. I think like as writers, you, I, I feel very goofy about how I sling words together. Game dialogue is one thing, uh, but the prose thing was uh, really it was really hard for me. And uh, so I've pretty much been a chicken all these years. You know, we'll let, we'll let Davey do it. Dave just put out the uh, Sylvanas story that popped a couple weeks ago. Uh, but trying to get you know the other brothers in uh, creative development and sisters in creative development to you know kind of write a lot of the fiction. But maybe one day, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll sack up and dig it out. But uh, I do enjoy writing, but it's uh, it's terrifying, terrifying. 
I write it kind of like an eighth grade level, so. Do it. Do it. Do it. But thank you very much for the very kind compliment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, this question is regarding Lordaeron. Um, I wanted to know what happened to Arthas' sister, Kalia, if she escaped Lordaeron or she died or what happened to her. Good question. Are we, are we calling in the blue shirt? <laughs> Dr. Copeland, fire, fire. What's up? No. Um, actually, we did address that. Um, we had an ask. We have a normal ask CDEV thread. It's a Q and A that we do. Uh, we ask these guys these hard hitting Just questions. Just straight answer. Just straight answer. We're thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> Which means we don't have a plan. Uh, but we've been talking about this character forever. I think there was some hooks in the RPG line. Where, oh, I have a topic for you guys. There were some hooks in the RPG line that kind of suggested she was going one way or another, but. Uh, no, no current plans. While that's on my mind, uh, how many role players, role players, how many role players are in the audience? Nice, nice. Goodness gracious. So guys, I know you're pretty pissed off uh, at the recent uh, Ask Blizzard thing. We said the RPG line was uh, non-canonical. Uh, how many people are pissed off that it was non-canonical? Not too many. That's not bad. Okay. <laughs> Somebody said they were stoked. You're stoked that it's not canonical? I feel you, sister. I feel you. Uh, so anyway, it was a really blanket kind of call. We were moving fast that day. Hey, RPG is canonical? No, let's, let's move on. Um, but there are some really good bits in those books. Um, it will be a very heavy task to try and go back through and codify every new hook that those writers put into those books. Um, but there's a lot of good stuff in there, too. So all I, all I would say in terms of codifying all that is, Let's say they're broadly non-canonical, but I'm sure there's all sorts of bits in there that we do want to use that are, that are awesome, right? So uh, just saying the big blanket thing isn't really helpful. Um, so at some point, we may put a project together where we go back and look at every one of those ideas and see which ones we, we absolutely want to say yes on and which ones, you know, like Admiral proudmore has got some love child elf thing. I'm like, what in the world? Like, He's lawful good. He's not going to cheat on his wife. You know, I, it's just like there were ideas that I was just like, oh, come on. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that pings out. It just popped off the top of my head. So it sounds like most of you do not care. So uh, if that's true, wonderful. Thank you. Did we ever get to your question? Um, not really, but I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. Okay, this is something that's been bothering me since the days leading up to Kata. Why have characters like Crassus, Cadgar, and especially Ronan that have been directly tied to the Black Dragon flight and Deathwing not been present at all in Cataclysm? And please, <laughs> don't tell me Ronan's doing his own thing in Dalaran. His mind was controlled by Deathwing for almost an entire book. Dude, he's been totally doing his own thing in Dalaran. <laughs> You tell me, don't tell you. One of, the, uh, one of the issues we struggle with in making the game is that uh, there are a lot of characters and we want players to kind of remember the characters and we want to really set up big characters that you remember. And we, uh, we don't want to have the idea that, oh, you have to read a whole novel to know this character or why this character uh, you know, doesn't like this. We try and make sure that the games do stand alone. So a lot of times we'll have stories in the novels that feel like they should kind of continue in the game, but we opt not to put that in the game because then we'd have to t try and catch everybody up to a novel that they haven't read. So I, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty valid point, and it's also kind of hard to work into the game for everybody that has not read the novels. Is Al of Moonguard, uh, praise so fond. <laughs> um, so whatever happened to the uh, crown of Menetho? Or is that something that we're ever going to find out about? Uh, Terranus' crown. Yeah, uh, the one that fell off his head when Arthur stabbed him. Legendary loot drop. No. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Good. We're going to make it a legendary loot drop. I, I have no idea who would have it, who would drop it. We're going to take some notes. Good. Thanks. Got it in my head. Uh, Mr. Metzen, just 
first, before I ask my question, I have to let you know that uh, my name is Emizel from Maelstrom. Uh, both the Scarlet March and the Royal Strauss Forum Dynasty are inspired by you and salute you. So thank you very much for everything that you do. Thanks, man. Thank you. Um, <laughs> no problem. My question is regarding uh, Tarande. I'm kind of wondering, um, she's been, she was strong in the past, a strong female figure, a leader. She stepped up to the task when she was asked, and then it kind of fell off. Um, during during a Burning Crusade, during Wrath, during Cataclysm, she kind of just... I mean, at this point, she's Malfurion's arm candy. What's going on? Oh, come on. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, good point. Um, I've been seeing this on uh, forums quite a bit, too. Uh, let me just say this. Before the quest line in Nagrand, in Burning Crusade, there was no thrall at all in WoW, right? Like, he was standing there, maybe he gave you the, what was it, the uh, Ragefire Chasm quest, right? There was no thrall at all. And I like this guy. It took an expansion or two, or whatever, to finally get to him and start, you know, really bringing his story off. Uh, I love Tyrande, right? Um, I, I had a blast riding her in Warcraft 3. Um, we just haven't uh, we just haven't gotten to her yet. Um, but kind of like you know, like Dave's uh, you know Sylvanas story uh, you know, and the whole you know uh, Alex's you know Silver Pine quest line. Um, every one of these characters is going to have their day, and I, I love this character. Uh, and, and in no way do we intend to just make her Malfurion's arm candy or whatever. That's ridiculous. This is one of the fiercest, most badass, elegant you know creatures in the world, as far as I'm concerned. So it's just a matter of time for a lot of these characters. Some of them. Because of the comic book, you know, Varian got his day in the sun, and we'll have more. And, you know, certain other of these characters, it's just, it just depends on what phase of development we're in, what big ideas we're driving at any given time, but, like, totally, Toronto's going to get uh, some love, uh, and not just <laughs> going to make a comment here, but... Family, family show. It's on TV right family now. Show. Like a... Family show. Family uh, show. But uh, Jaina Proudmore, on a similar vein needs to have a moment. She's getting her moment. We got it's a coming. novel coming out. She's going to be much more active. We, we love these characters. We're going to bring them around. And, We're going to bring them around. And guys, here's the thing, right? I, like I, I see this all the time on forums. And people are, uh, like, we'll get clobbered, right? That we're, we're underserving these characters, or these ones are Mary Sue's, or these ones, or whatever, whatever, whatever. It's all coming. We love these characters. They are all dynamic. And we have plans for all of them. Um, we just can't execute against everything at, at any time. Right. Um, so you know, no one loves these characters like we do. You know, so we want to serve them all. We want them to be compelling. You know, even, even when we get into thematic areas like Thrall, right? So I'm reading a lot of this stuff. And people are going, when did he become such a wuss? You've ruined Thrall. Like, it ain't over yet. <laughs> right? He's, but brother's going through some rough times but the champion times are on the way, right? So you, bear with us. We have a plan, you know. Um, we love these characters, uh, you know, as much or more as you guys do, and uh, we want to be respectful of all of them. So just kind of saying that off the top of my head. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, first of all, Chris, I don't know what kind of shift in the universe happened whenever you come out on BlizzCon wearing an Alliance hoodie. <laughs> Want to see a magic trick? I'm going to get right out of this. You ready? For the horn! <laughs> I almost got out of it. All right. uh, look. Did the Doom Hammer burn your hand when you put on the Alliance shirt? A little bit. Uh, That's not my question, by the way. I'm just saying that. Okay. Let's just move right past that. Okay, that's awesome, because I have a really important question, okay? I waited on the other panel. Here's my question. The panel, this panel, has said that Pandarians have no sense of hatred. That Pandaria is one in a sense of chi and positive energy. So how does it make more sense for a Pandaren to be a warlock and not a druid? Are they making... Are, I, I, didn't, I didn't think Warlock was in there. They're not allowed to be Death Knights, Paladins, or... Help me out, guys. 
I, is it Warlocks? No. All right, I'll, I'll tell you this. No, it's not. No, it's not. It was. I'll, t I'll tell you this. Tr and true Durant. or not? And I, I where's the there fact three. checker? There were three. There were three. Copeland, go. Uh, what I would say is, if that's true, I don't like it. I typically get overruled when it comes down to game design, right? They're, they're trying to balance out forces. War Warlock's a little weird. I'm pretty sure Warlock was out. I can't so. stand that chisel. But what I would say is, in certain of these classes, Death Knight, Warlock, right? These are affected classes, right? Death Knights aren't necessarily choosing this life. You, you know what I want to do when I grow up? I want to become a slavering, rotting Death Knight. That sounds like fun, Sparky. Warlock 2, uh, I, I, if it goes that way, I'm just ripping off the top of my head. These are very, I, I, I guess you can argue, while well, Pandarans don't necessarily have, they just don't vibe on hate. It's not, it's, not, it's not impossible that they would hate. Do they hate injustice? Do they hate to see starving people on the side of the street? Probably. It's not that they are without hate in, in Toto. It is that, Toto! Uh, it's that they, they choose other. So, they're they're I mean, aware of the consequences of hate more so than any other. I don't really care totally. about them being warlocks as much as I care about them not being druids. You want to bear, bear for them. Be, okay, that's the thing. That's the excuse they gave. Well, what would bear for them be? They're already a bear. It would be bear. Yeah, so, that sounds if you did this, okay, shady. like through meditation, they're able to like unlock a primal form and they're able to attack as a bear. That's not difficult to explain through as much as... I'm feeling you right now. We'll, we'll, you know, Monday morning, we'll run down the hall and we'll yell at the design dudes and go, hey, we'll see. I, we'll see I how don't it know, I, but I don't know. The timeline, uh, Pandaria disappeared behind the mists before the Sundering. I don't know if they really had the Druids coming. I don't know if Cenarius was around there teaching them to be Druids. That is a very good point, I don't think David. it was happening. Very good point. We have a fact check happening. Data is, is being poured onto the stage right now. What's the verdict? She was confirming uh, the warlock thing. They can't, can't be warlocks. Uh, right. Druids. Druids is the question. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say. I, I still think druids are out. That might change, but I think, I think no druids. All right. Thank you. Guys. Thank, Thank, you. you. Thank you for your question. Good question. Hey, don't gentlemen. Uh, idiot Tank, Doom All Horde. Uh, my question concerns the demon slash dragon soul. With Thrall and the heroes going in and taking it out of the timeline, Alex Straza was never captured, which means most of her mates are still alive. Ronan never went on a quest to save her, which means he never got redeemed and became head of Dalaran. And of course, the aspects are still at half power. Go. That was very well thought out. And your observations are airtight. Watch how it plays out. Bear Thank with you. us. Thank you. We watch a lot of Star Trek too, so we get this whole time thing. No problem. No problem. Uh, yes, my question is about Arthas's mother, Liane Amenethel. She was mentioned in the Rise of the Lich King novel. And then uh, once in Warcraft 3, he killed his father. Um, there's, I mean, there's never any mention about what happened to her either. Does, is he a mama's boy and he didn't kill her, or did he have no mercy and kill her as well, or did she just die of old age? Because Art Tenerus was pretty old at the same time. Uh, I, I think that we have not officially made that up. Um, you know, uh, what, what I mean is we haven't crafted her fate. Like, I, I don't think anyone around the office knows. I don't think we've even talked about it. Um, although my impression of Warcraft 3 I think it works better if she had died at some point before the fall of Lordaeron, right? But, you know, of, of something, right? We just haven't, we just haven't covered it. Uh, because killing Terranus is, is pretty striking, right? Um, we didn't see his mom, we didn't see, you know, I just think it diminishes that moment if he just goes on this Charlie Manson spree. So I think probably a classier solution would be that somehow she's just out of the picture years earlier. Or think about it. you kill her and get a legendary crown. 
So Probably you're saying that she died previously to the corruption of Arthas? I, I mean, I'm, my sense of it is that that's probably the right way to play it, ultimately balancing all these ideas, uh, but we'll, we'll continue to talk about it. Thank you. Good question. Uh, hello. Uh, I just read the Sylvanas Swinrunner short story Excellent. last night. Thank you. Really good. Boom. Um, questions arose from that uh, regarding the shards of Frostmourne. Uh, where are they? Did Sylvanas or some of her flunkies take it to Undercity or something else entirely? Yeah, it specifically wasn't addressed in the story. Uh, and I actually don't know the answer as to why. I, I didn't think they were there, honestly. But I don't think we've addressed it in the lore. What? Some very smart people picked those things up and took them somewhere where they will be safe. Uh, but I can imagine there will be shenanigans one day. Some idiot trying to reforge that damn thing. Uh, sounds plausible to me. Uh, uh, and that's about all I know about it. Thank you. Hi, my question's about Agalon. Um, when you beat him, he, does, he starts to go on maybe a midlife crisis where he's like, you know, where the other planets he's destroyed, kind of the same as Azeroth. He seems to wonder how, you know, uh, you can differ from the Titan plan. Then he decides, I think in a comic book, he needs more than one hour a week to see what makes us tick. Um, what's he up to? Um, are there more of his kind that might kind of come see what he's up to? Uh, what's up with him? Good question. Um, how do I answer this? The whole, the whole Titan storyline, who those folks are, uh, what they're doing out in the universe, are they, are they still alive? Did they have a plan for this, or for their plan for the world if it went south? Uh, you know, we see in Old Doom that, you know, in, in fact, they did, and it wasn't all that good for us. Uh, the Titan uh, storyline, you know, throughout World of Warcraft is something that needs to play out over a very, very long period of time. You know, we can't just, two expansions from now, we'll have Titans. Like, they're, they're so big. Like, I'm not entirely sure how to deal with them yet because they're, they're massive, right? And, and they are from somewhere super exotic. Um, so it's kind of hard to know exactly how to leverage them into the franchise. Um, although I loved what we did on, on, uh, on Cataclysm relative to, you know, that storyline coming back around, Wrath of the Lich King, you know, with, with all Doom, uh, you know, and, and, and all the storylines in that dungeon. So it's definitely something that is very vital to Warcraft's storyline, um, but we're, we're still kind of letting it cook a little bit in terms of how we'll leverage them. Uh, I'll, I'll riff a little bit and tell you that there were things about Burning Crusade that I really, really loved. Shattered planets in the sky and ethereals running around. I mean, it was just so high concept and whack, right? It was not the same old fantasy thing. Um, but as we talked to the community, certainly uh, a lot of folks around the office were just like, I don't know, man. I, I just want to have gnolls and kobolds and run around in a pretty forest. Like, that's what fantasy is to me. So reflexively, when we built Northrend, you know, you get like grizzly hills, you get these really just pretty areas, right? Uh, because a, a, a lot of the team was just feeling, we want to get back to that. It's the, it's the familiarity of, of fantasy that really makes it work. It makes us feel at home in this world. Uh, but there's a part of me, man, that wants to just launch into all the, you know, the worlds out there, you know, like, are there still Draenei out there in the universe? Are the Titans still moving out there, right? Uh, we didn't defeat the Burning Legion in the Bur in, in, in Burning Crusade, right? They're still out there. There's all sorts of crazy critters out there. I want to go to Argus, right? You know, the world of the, of the, of the Eredar. I want to go, you know. I had this hook. I mean, well, how badass would it be if there's like this shining fleet of Draenei out there somewhere that, you know, Velen doesn't even know about, other survivors, right? Um, wow, that's technically that's Protoss. Uh, so th there's so many flavors and themes I want to chase relative to these big mythic macro ideas, but... It's just a matter of feeling it out, right? You know, we, we got plenty of time with this game, uh, you know, but for the most part, I wanted to explain that a lot of our, a lot of our brothers and sisters at Blizzard kind of tend to like it a little more down to the ground. 
Uh, so let me just ask you with y'all here, does the, the kind of weird Doctor Strange kind of cosmic stuff, like, is anyone in here into that kind of stuff, or? <laughs> More than a few. So, so we'll see. I, I love that kind of stuff. So we'll see what happens with Titans and all that good stuff. I, I think uh, it is safe go. to say that there, there's something about Azeroth that is unique within the cosmology, and there's a reason that it's, it's kind of the focus of this. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I wanted to say uh, thank you for the excellent Forsaken storylines in Cataclysm. I'm a diehard Forsaken fan, and I excellent. follow them religiously. I wanted to ask regarding the quest line in Hillsbrad, uh, specifically. Um, silly quest aside, I noticed there was an interaction between the Frostwolf clan of Altrak Valley and the Forsaken of Terran Mill. I felt that that was somewhat unresolved. Um, I, I really loved the, the anger, the hatred, that it kind of swelled for my character. I'm a, I'm a diehard role player. And so I was following this, this concept of, we, we already hate Garrosh because of all the crap he pulled in Silverpine, and we're now going to hate the Alterac Valley uh, orcs, particularly the Ferrosfold clan. Do you have plans to resolve these, these tensions, this animosity, and the Forsaken's place in the Horde? You know, one of the themes that we were hinting at with Cataclysm that I love to explore and that we're going to explore a lot more is sort of these fissures and cracks that are developing among the Horde that, that might be problematic. And that was a big one. That was actually a very big dramatic scene kind of hidden in the middle of the zone was this, whoa, wait, did that just happen? Wait a second. Yeah. Uh, so your reaction to it's perfect. It was it's kind of an awesome uh, story hook there that has kind of been unresolved. There's that hanging there. That's just one of the examples of, of sort of these fissures in the, in the horde that we're going to really look at and explore. So that'll come around again, for sure. Thank you. Anyone want to say on that? Okay. Hey, my name is Cameron. Um, I love trolls. They're Whoa. awesome. They're the best race ever created in World of Warcraft, in my opinion. You already had us co-op Zul'jin. You gave us you know, the new heroics, and they were great and fun to play, but will we ever really see a return of the troll empires? And just giving us good trolls back. I love what you guys did with the new starting area, too, by the way. Excellent. Really cool. Troll, troll empires. The, the Dark Spear are interesting. It's kind of an, uh, like an offshoot of the trolls. I mean, they were... They're, relatively s a small tribe that has, is now kind of ascending to importance because of being associated with the Horde. The rest of the troll tribes, very different situation. Man, if they ever could unite, look out world, right? And that's really kind of what the Zandalari were, were trying to do. Uh, and why, why are the Zandalari suddenly all about creating a new troll empire? That you're going to find out in, in Pandaria. Uh, so we're going to continue some troll fiction there. Uh, through the, the troll, future troll storylines, uh, apart from the Dark Spear, obviously, um, will probably actualize through the Zandalari. They are not done yet, and they're crazy. They are, they are being driven by something right now. Just wanted to say thank you, and, um, you know, if you guys want someone to write that stuff, I've got a portfolio and resume right in my My troll bag. brother! Hell yeah! Guys, dingo! Guys, <laughs> dingo! Thank you. Uh, he hello. Um, I've been to every BlizzCon except one, and I remember reacting to the announcements of the various uh, expansions. Woo, we're going to Outland. Woo, we're killing Arthas. Woo, we're going to Deathwing. Is this gonna Pan hurt? Pandas. Huh? Is this gonna hurt? Um, I like uh, the more serious aspects of Warcraft's storyline. Uh, I, I like the comedy stuff. I got a, I got a kick out of Hills Brad and Johnny Awesome and all that. But uh, I'm just wondering, is, this, is there going to be dark, serious stuff at some point in this expansion, or is it going to be 18 months of so lightheartedness and the, kung fu panda jokes? The Pandaren had a cameo in Warcraft 3. That's kind of where they were introduced. And they sort of appeared in some April Fool's jokes we've done since then. But you haven't really met them. You, know what I mean? you haven't really seen who the Pandaren are, what they're about, how they're about. The kind of stuff they struggle with, the kind of bad stuff that's happening in their homeland, uh, the whole rich history of this culture. So when we created Pandaria, I mean, we went back 
like 15,000 years to try and figure out, well, what were they doing then? What was happening to the land then? What happened during the Sundering? Uh, uh, and really tried to build a rich history behind them. So if you think it's a joke race, let's check out what we're doing, because we're, we're actually really building a lot, a lot of story onto this. There's, there's quite a bit to them. I think they're pretty badass. I think they're really awesome fighters. The Pandaren are, are just really fun to play with. I mean, they love life. They, they work hard. They play hard. They eat hard. They drink hard. They sleep hard. Uh, they, do, they do everything. They really live life to the fullest. They bring a, a whole other uh, aspect to, to uh, all the different uh, cultures and WoW. I think you'll see a lot. I think you'll be surprised. There's no way we're going to build an expansion set based on an April Fool's joke. Uh, and what, what you guys may not know is uh, the... Did I say that in a panel? I said it in an interview. The Pandarans came, uh, our, our senior art director, Sam Didier, right, kind of started drawing these guys years ago. It was just a, just a passion project for him. Uh, and he painted all sorts of pictures of these guys. No one really thought, you know, that, that we'd really include him in Warcraft. It was just what he loved drawing. And so he had, like, crazy panda shamans and just... His artwork was off the hook. And, and we were pretty much... I remember that, was it Warcraft 3? We included Chen Stormstout in... Frozen Throne, maybe, in the Orc campaign? Was it after that? I can't remember anymore. Uh, but these, things, these guys are not a joke. This is an idea that we have been thinking about for years. It's one of our favorite flavors of Warcraft. It's not ultimately silly. It's just a little lighter. But the context of what's going on where they live, the context of what's happening in the history of the world at this time, Sirius is a heart attack. They're just really, they're just really chill about it. Right? But this is no joke, right? You know, the P Pandarans, are, this is not a throwaway, silly, silly, ha-ha, funny expansion set. It is absolutely the next vital chapter as things ratchet up. They're gonna, gonna get really gnarly. The idea is, as things get super crazy in the world between red and blue, how do I put it? The, P the Pandarans are gonna be part, ultimately, of a solution because they just think differently than most of us do a little more far-sighted. So they're really going to make a difference in the history of the world, but it's definitely not a light throwaway expansion set in any way. Like Dave said, uh, come on the ride with us, right? You know, be, be, be patient, but don't jump to conclusions about how thin the idea is. It is not. It's about as rich a kit as anything we put out so far, and it's definitely got its intrigues and its, its dangers and its, its, its drama. You know, it's, it's definitely, you know, it, you know, it ain't armies of the dead and it ain't, you know, you know demons falling out of the sky. But uh, it's definitely going to have some flavor and some teeth. Great. Thank you for the question, though. Awesome. Yeah, really good question, man. Hi, my name is Daniel. Big fan, Chris, and all the writers. I really like the short stories. Coming home from work and having a Lord of Reads pretty cool. Great. Uh, my question is about Bane Bloodhoof and the Fear Breaker. I read The Shattering and I read the short story, and he kind of seems like he's leaning Sunwalker path. Or is there something bigger to that or different to that? Or is he becoming a Sunwalker? Uh, I, I, this came up again the other day. I, I'll tell you my opinion. It, it can go a number of ways. I mean, his, his story is just really just beginning, technically. Uh, the Sunwalker thing, um, everybody had a fit when Torin, you know, when, when Paladin came up, right? It just doesn't feel all that right. You know, these are, you know, uh, historically nomadic people, they're down with the Earth Mother, they're, you know, people, you know, that are bound to nature. The Paladin light thing doesn't really, doesn't really fit all that well. Sunwalker was an attempt to at least try to, to, to you know, uh, realize the lore and, and, and make sure that, you know, it, it fit about as well as it could fit. Um, and I think, I think the, the quest teams did a really good job on, on, on you know, uh, banging out that idea. Relative to Bane, uh, I can see how people can come to that conclusion, you know, Fear Breaker being a hammer, being a, a particularly paladin-like weapon. Uh, I can tell you my opinion is, like, I don't feel that would be appropriate for a Tauren leader. It just doesn't fit with their kit. Uh, uh, and I, I, I actually particularly like the idea that, that, that Bane and Cairn uh, were actually not supernatural people. They're just, they're just Tauren, right? They're just, they're just dudes of the earth. You know, they don't have a supernatural component. They don't have magical powers, right? They're just... They're just Torrent, right? I love the truth of that because it just, it, that's just what Torrent says to me. So I'm not a huge fan of, of actually making him a Sunwalker. Um, 
But you, know, you never know. You know, we've, we've sold weirder ideas in this world. If you've all been paying attention, I've bought off on all sorts of weird things I didn't think would work. So you never know, but I, I, don't, I don't love that idea. Uh, now I want to ask Dave, were you guys totally going in that direction? I don't think we had solid plans yet for where Bain was going to go, so we can, we can talk about that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hi, uh, just give a quick shout out to my guild, Black Label on Kalthas. Uh, anyways, I was wondering, for the books, we don't see too much of what happens in the books like come over into the game like with uh, spoilers for Thrall. Crossus dying, is that going to like have an effect on WoW? Are we going to see like Alex Straza still grieving or like going to get a new maid or something like, like that? Uh, that's two different points. On part B, which is you know, Alex Straza and the, the nature of, of the aspects and what's coming for them. <laughs> I can't wait for you guys to see how this all ends up. Uh, it's really good. Um, so we're not gonna we're not gonna tell you anything about big about things the go down in four three. Big things go down. I mean, literally, figuratively. Big, oh, I didn't. Uh, Big events transpire in 4.3. You guys are gonna love it. It's 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 uh, let's say the the completion of a very grand grand cycle that's been moving for a very long time. Relative to the first part, you're talking about things. Uh, this has been coming up a lot lately. Uh, for many years, we put out books because I was petrified of trying to develop fiction in real time with WoW. The quest design process is complicated enough, right? It's really hard to develop quests, right? You know, Dave, how many people are on your team? You got seven? Uh, yeah, uh, seven, eight people at the moment. You know what I mean? Like trying to develop that much story and just keep moving and keep the game development moving fast. It's an incredibly complex process and time consuming process. So as we were chasing stories over the years, we tended to, we'll, we'll, we'll novelize this or we'll tell a story that's in the past. We took more of a conservative route. The last number of years since I think a uh, little bit of Arthas, but really with the shattering, which just blew it out. Um, we want to start making everything as, as concurrent with the current timeline as possible. Not timeline, but the, the current uh, ideas that you guys are actually engaging with through the game uh, right now. You know, so through all the aspects is roughly uh, contiguous with, you know, elements of the last couple patches. What the hell are we talking about? Well, I, I, I could jump in. Oh, I, I had a good point. I, I got the hand. Talking. I got the hand. Was that? It was the hand. Didn't. Um, So a lot of people, so, so, so the fact that you guys are here, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume you kind of dig some of this content, you dig reading, reading these books, um, but like for the millions of WoW players out there, um, not everybody wants to go read a book. It's a digital age. Buy a Kindle, damn it, quit complaining. Uh, so a lot of people don't necessarily want to run out and read books and comics and all that stuff. They, they want their content in the game. When we have these big tectonic movements, you know, within, within the ancillary fiction, uh, a lot of players can start to feel a little cheated. Like, whoa, 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 you just killed Karen. I didn't see that. I don't get to take part in that at all. I certainly don't want to read a stupid book about it. So it, it, you, can, you can tell, like a, like a massive part of our player base can feel cheated from time to time. Uh, I love us putting out books, and we are going to continue to do so. We're going to continue to make them as good as we can make them, but uh, it does bring up a good point is I think I think the onus is on us to try and really bring some of these events and, and really have them more evidenced in the game that kind of thing needs to be balanced out against the the quest lines and the content that Dave and his team are already pushing you know you can only get so much done at any given time so it's something we're trying to balance a little better as we move forward yeah. um, and so that no one feels ripped off right no one feels like well I never saw this content what in the world right um, it's, it's just something we're trying to balance as we go Certainly one of my principal goals with being on the content team for WoW is to make sure that these key events that happen in the lore are somehow represented in the game. So if you read the book, you'll get all kinds of perspectives about the characters and about the event that happened. But there will be a component of it in the game that you can interact with so that you can catch up, so you can see what happened. Like, oh, big event. I, I was there. I, I got to experience that. 
it's not, it's not easy to do. We're going to try, we're going to keep trying to experiment. I think we can do a much better job of it. And I, I absolutely agree with you. So we're, we're working on that. It's one of my principal goals. And I work really closely with all the guys on, on CDEV to, to try and make that happen. All right, thanks. Yeah, you guys do a great job. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? Uh, you guys are awesome, brilliant geniuses. Uh, Chris, I love you. You're my hero. Um, so don't get mad at this question. Um, I played Alliance for seven years. And the booze, there they are. So that kind of proves what I'm going to say. Um, you've done a wonderful job with the Horde and um, fleshing out their story. And Thrall is this amazing, honorable, cool guy, gets married, all that stuff. Um, it happens. And, <laughs> and uh, it's really great. And then when it comes to like Varian, he's a really one-dimensional, I'd say almost boring uh, thing. Oh, so, how dare you. I'm sorry. Um, it's a really popular issue online and on blogs and stuff. Um, does Alliance ever get to kick ass at any point in a WoW because, see, or some one of those wait and see things? So, so here's, amazing. Here's, here's the deal. <laughs> Part of the thrall thing, um, I, I've been pushing that. I particularly love that character. I don't look at it as a horde issue. I look at it as a thrall issue. Right? Ultimately, that doesn't matter, but just, just so you know, um, I'm just really invested in that, right, I'm biased, invested in that character. Here's what we're going to do. I don't know exactly where it's going to drop. We're trying to get this idea executed against 5.0. Um, I think Varian has potential to be an unbelievably badass character. Uh, I've been talking to Dave and uh, kind of jotting down some notes. What I want to do is create a very epic quest line called the, called the Trials of the High King, such that Varian will be given tasks like, you know, the, the labors of Hercules, right, by each of the Alliance races, something that means something to them, something that really gives you an insight into each of these races and how they're doing right now, something that only he can kind of accomplish for them, and you will be his squire, right? You will help Varian become the most badass alliance leader, such that at the end of the day, there's no more personality bullshit, right? He's totally got it together. He's one of the most you know, awesome warriors in the world. And ultimately, every one of these alliance races is going, you're totally our king. We will follow you anywhere. Thank you so much. And, and the thing I'd say on top of that, kind of like we were talking with the, with the opening ceremony the other day, you know, the, the, the conflict that's coming between the alliance and the horde, the alliance is gonna need a king that has his shit together. And he's going to get it together. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, we always look at, uh, when we, we write for the world, sometimes, like, we see Thrall as, like, a world character. And I can understand, if you're the Alliance, you're like, yeah, but he's not my dude. And, and I, I, I feel you there. I think we owe the Alliance big time. So it's, it's going to come around. Yeah. And we're also going to explore his, uh, Varian's relationship with his son, with, with Anduin. We're going to explore some of that. We've actually got really good hooks for Anduin down the line. Anduin's, uh, like, potentially... And you know what's funny? Before Christy Golden wrote The Shattering, we did not have plans for Anduin. And she was... In, so we, were, we were talking today, we had worked out the outline, and she's like, Chris, I'm just... I'm feeling this kid, and I think he's going to be a, a, a really wonderful component of the story and help me move things along. I'm like, Christy... You know, I, I don't know, you know, that's, that's burning a lot of screen time on a character. And she said, just trust me. I'm like, I, I totally trust her. And she killed it. I'm reading that book and just going, I love this kid. So currently he's off to boarding school with the Draenei and learning, uh, you know, the, the deep ways of the cosmic light with Velen. Uh, and uh, we, got some, we got some plans for that boy one day. Uh, so there you have it. <laughs> or the horde. All this alliance talk. I know. Well, we got plans for the horde too. It's all Don't good. worry, horde. Uh, uh, you guys are great. Dave, thank you so much for that Solana story. That oh, was excellent. excellent. Thank you. And on that topic, um, in the story we see that there are nine Valkyr and it takes one to revive her. In the Silver Pine quests, we see three Valkyr seemingly sacrifice themselves to. Uh, revive her. So, can you clarify, are yeah. there any rules um, as far as her Valkyrie resurrection, and like, if there are, how many does she have left, and can she make more? Uh, 
so she cannot make more. What you got is what you got. Uh, it was interesting as we were putting that story together, we were trying to make sure it matched up with what was going on in Silver Pine. So three of the, uh, the more lesser Valkyr it took to, to raise her in Silver Pine, it only took one of, of the more elder Valkyr to, to really kind of uh, sacrifice herself. Uh, how many are left? I think, what do we come up with? You're going to have to, I, I, I'm, I'm turning to you here because I think we, we counted up. We, three in Silver Pine, one in, uh, in Northrend. Um, uh, one of them was killed by the Alliance in, uh, in Andahal, right? Yeah. yeah. So what's we got left? Four? She's only got four. Go get her! Long live the Banshee Queen! Yeah. I actually brought my archive from the East Coast in the hopes that I could get you to sign a Blood and Honor. I read it on the airplane. Um, and I have 10 Horde 85s on oh, one server. Nice! <laughs> yeah, one of each class, because um, I'm a GM, so I like to know a little bit about everything. Um, but I've always had a soft spot for Tyrion, so I really, really appreciated that story to kind of justify why I loved him so much. Um, so that's kind of completely not related to my question. Um, my question's actually about Neptalon in The Throne of the Tides and kind of what happened to him. And um, are we going to find out about his little tryst with Ozimat and the tentacle thing that kind of happens? Me? Oh, I don't know. I don't know about tentacles now. I don't know. I don't know nothing. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe we'll just leave that under the ocean. Just leave that buried. Leave that... Uh, yeah, actually, I do not have a good answer for that. What happens in the Throne of Tides stays in the Throne of Tides. Uh, can we just not answer that question? It's a really hard question. <laughs> it's a damn mess is what it was. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. For the Horde, uh, Earth and Ring represent. My question is about Bulvor Four Dragon. He was Alliance leader. Badass mother effer, and then he becomes the next Lich King. And we don't see him reigning in the Scourge at all. So, what's up with that? I mean, he was awesome before, and now what's he doing sitting on the throne? I mean, we already had a leader sitting on his butt for five years, and now we have another leader sitting on his butt for five years? I gotta say, it wasn't an easy transition for him. You gotta give him a little bit of time. He was kind of melted for a little while and then he's just stuck in an ice cube. It's, it's tough. That's hard. That's a hard thing to go through. Pardon me. Well, relative to him not reigning in the Scourge, what do you, what do you base that on? Um, the Skolomance, Stratholm, like withdrawing all of them back to Northrend. I mean, Arthas could definitely have called everybody back up as far as I know. I'm sure he could have done, uh, I think Four Dragon could do that too, but we're fighting them in Anderhal. Uh, we're going into Stratholm. We're going into Skolomance. All right. So the way I would spin that is that the Scourge and the Cult of the Dam currently operating in Plaguelands uh, are likely autonomous. Oh, okay. The idea with Bolvar putting that helmet on and, and it, it, it attempting to kind of contain the Scourge, um, I think that's probably a thing. It, this is where we get a little funky, right? It's probably a thing that's it's really, it's really about Northrend, right? And the idea is, yeah, but I just got on a boat yesterday, man. Those quests are still happening. Um, ideally, if this thing had a clean timeline, which is, to, which is, to, mm -hmm, which it does not. If we were, if we were making a movie, if we were writing it as a novel, um, I imagine the, the fiction of it is such that with him on that frozen throne, the scourge has kind of gone to sleep in Northrend, right? But obviously, it doesn't play out that way in the game. You can still go back and do all those quests across Northrend or whatever. So, you know, we're, we're trying to figure it out. But that, that that's the intent of the fiction is that things aren't as bad as they were. Um, and he is not a, a monstrous Lich King. Is actually kind of trying to keep everybody chill. There won't be any ma major crazy new Scourge attacks um, for some time. Uh, but 
the scourge operating in uh, plague lands, I think it's probably more helpful to look at them as a little more uh, autonomous. Um, although we haven't really dug out a lot of lore to substantiate that. Well, how are they autonomous? Who's driving these critters? Zombies don't have free will. Well, well certainly uh, as Arthas's power waned, he lost control of the Forsaken. Totally. Yeah, so we got a new Lich King. Oh, good backup, get, Dave. Getting his feet wet. <laughs> Lich King strikes back, someone suggested. Merely a setback. Why really would you assume? <laughs> someone picked up those fragments of Frostmourne. What are they doing? <laughs> nice. Cool. So, very, very good question. Thanks very much. Have a good one. Thank you. Hey there, guys. Uh, this is a question that I have had for three years, uh, one and a half expansions. I thought I was going to get an answer in 4.1. I thought I was going to get an answer with the troll guy who asked his troll questions. But, um,. Here it is. In the Gundrak dungeon, there is an area with the stone sentinel guys, and if you look over the cliff, there's a big wiggly snake tail. And I have been bothered by this forever because there's nothing that massive and, and snaky in the, uh, like, uh, so with these questions, I, I, I've seen Chris answer these in the past, and it's one of those, like, we'll, we'll see, I'll look into it. So I brought a screenshot of it. Uh, I blew it up. And the man comes armed with a wiggly snake tail. A wiggly snake tail appears. It's super effective. Dude just showed you a snake, man. Feels dirty. So you said there was something driving the trolls, and uh, it ain't that. All right. Well, so then, what is this giant snake tail? Clearly, it's a super critical story point to World of Warcraft. You just haven't it, found it, out yet. It's, it's, it drives me crazy. And I, uh, you know, I'm just curious. That's the first sign of the return of the Titans. And Medivh will be leading them. Uh, the forums will be holding and you Thrall to that. And is going to leave Agra and start dating Jaina. Yeah. Just kidding. Oh, how dare you. I don't know what the hell that snake thing is, but it's kind of cool. Some, I'll be very honest, sometimes really cool stuff appears in our game, and then we kind of scramble to figure out why it would be there, because it's cool. Artists love to just do cool stuff, and so, yeah, sometimes, sometimes we miss something, like something cool is there, and we're like, oh, wow, I don't know, it's a snake. Welcome to developing video games. You put what in what? <laughs> we have time for a few more questions. All right, thank you. My name is Magnus, and Chris, I have an answer to your opening ceremony yesterday. For a Alliance variant for Doomhammer, do Bulvar's Longsword. I like that a lot. Do I have to add so, that to my uh, list now? <laughs> my question is, um, how are you going to do the leadership for the pandas, right? So they're unified once during the quest line, and then they split up the alliance or horde. So who's going to be leader, and can one of them be named at, na voiced over by Jack Black? What was that? You can voice the horn one. God. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Let, let me do one more voice. It'd be good. <laughs> too soon! <laughs> Damn right it's too soon. It was too many back then. Uh, the... <laughs> they actually don't kind of have leaders that way. There are notable pandas, right? But they're kind of... They're really kind of self-actualizing people, right? They don't really, I mean, certainly they have a, 
Well, I don't know how much you want to well, say. Gonna, there's definitely going to be representatives for the Pandaren with the Horde and a representative of the Pandaren with the Alliance. I wouldn't necessarily call them racial leaders because the Pandaren are very, very different. And those leaders come from the turtle, right? So it's not quite, they're not, you know, you're not going to find them on Pandaria somewhere. So different situation. And we haven't, like, I don't, I don't have names to give you yet, but we've got to have some. And what, and what was the other part? Can one of the representatives or leaders be voiced by Jack Black? No. No. <laughs> hey, look, I love Jack Black. I love those movies. <laughs> Shall not be named, right? We've been slugging panda ideas for 12 years. So I think ours are better. Culturally, it's just very different. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually, I mean, the, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, obviously a lot of visual continuity there with, you know, the other uh, you know, panda movies or whatever, and uh, yeah, that's, that's a, uh, uh, you know, we've been building this kit for a long time, we're actually, uh, uh, we totally did, uh, you guys may or may not know this, we were going to have Pan Pan Pandaren be the alliance race in Burning Crusade. And we built that kit out, you know, years ago, right? Uh, but we got into a situation where we kind of pulled back, went, well, you know, maybe it's not right, and uh, yeah, there's maybe a story there. But um, we pulled back on the idea um, and crafted Drenai. Uh So I only roll that out to just show you, like, we've been very serious about this idea for a very long time. And actually, in a way, it's really cool that we didn't necessarily execute against that at that time because now we can build a whole land right instead of just a starting experience we yeah, can go to town absolutely. on this idea and really execute at a, at a very high I, level i don't know if you got to see the art panel the pandaren that we can build nowadays they're so expressive just their facial animations just the way the, the body is put together we can do so much more with this race they're so much more compelling now than we ever could have done back then so it's really really cool that we get to do this now we get to do it big That is all the time that we have for today. May we please have a round of applause for our panelists for answering Thank all these very more much, questions. Hey guys, thanks once again for coming. End of day two. We've loved having you here. We've loved, been jamming, uh, loved to you know, have jammed with you guys all weekend long. So thanks again for coming to BlizzCon. Thanks again for loving this stuff and uh, sticking with us and uh, you know, just really making us feel. Thank you very, very much. Thanks so Thank much. you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.